This is Andy Tube, and in this video, I'm going to uh, remove and do some disassembling on the hand wheel and the stop motion mechanism that's inside here. When I've had my other genies, I never really took that mechanism apart or opened it up or anything to see what was in there. But this time I, I did, and I, I think I've got it pretty well figured out, so I wanted to show it to you in case you're having any problems. Um, I do want to point out here that you're not going to see this plate inside the end of my hand wheel because it fell off a couple of days ago. And I took a look at it and there's, there's four little like plastic clips glued on it. Um, and those clips go in a hole in the bracket in here that I'll be showing you in a little bit. And two of them came off, so this was uh, wobbly, and I just pulled it out. So I'm, I have the clips, and they're fine. It's just like the glue claim came off here. So I'm going to have to figure out how to glue those back on later. But uh, you can actually operate the stop motion without that that plate. But uh, it's such a cute little plate. We want to we want to fix it up, right? So anyway. To uh, start with this, we're going to take the hand wheel off, and to do that, there's one screw down in here on the top of the bushing. So I'm going to show you a picture of that uh, screw, so you see which one I'm talking about. You take a look at that while I reposition the machine here. Okay. So you, you can take the screw off from any position, you know, if you want to lay the machine down on its back and, and turn the, the, the screw rotates with the arm and everything, so you could put it in any position you're comfortable with to remove it. But for filming, this is going to work pretty good. I'll just put it straight up here and go in and uh, loosen that screw. And because it's because it's facing down, once I got it loose, it's just going to sit in there. There we go, that feels pretty loose. So I'll just pull it out with a little magnet here. Let you see what that screw looks like. So, once once that is off, oh by the way, I, I have a video about re, uh, re replacing the belt, and um, you, I'll, I'll put a link to that below the vi this video and at the end of this video um, on how to get the the belt off easily for this. But basically, you loosen this uh, bracket mounting screw here, you raise the motor up about a half inch, and that lets you. Um, that lets you slip slip the belt right off of the motor pulley and then off the hand wheel okay and like I said I've got a video showing about that and I'll put a link to it so with the belt off then you can loosen that screw down in here and then you just pull the hand wheel assembly off okay here's what it looks like on the back side you can see some carbon deposits from the belt and you can see some rubber deposits here that um, I'm sure are from the bobbin winder, I would think, right? That's built into the uh, back cover there. Now back here, right, you see this big hole in, in the uh, stop motion mechanism. And that's where this piece of plastic with the four little clips clips into that hole. And you see the little hole up here, there's a little uh, pin up there. So you would line that uh, little pin up with the little hole and then press that into. And that little pin and hole is to keep it from doing, from twisting. See, I just got it in there. Uh, if it didn't have that, this little piece of plastic would just spin around. And it wants to keep it lined up for you. So when you push on the bobbin symbol, it disengages. 
the stop uh, uh, motion, you know, like that. So that's what that that is about. And I guess you could you could pull this right out and unsnap it, but um, since that plastic seems to be kind of fragile, I'll show you how to take this apart if you want to, and then you could um, you you could take it apart you could take this uh, plate off later so to to get the mechanism is attached like through a bushing that goes on slides on to the arm and that's you know got a hole in it and the bushing has a big hole and you put the screw right through there and that's what attaches it to the arm now what, what keeps this plastic housing onto that bushing, there's a, a snap ring here, right to there. And uh, to get that off, uh, most of the older machines I work on don't have these kind of springs and clips, maybe a couple, but um, they probably make a nice tool for this, I don't know. But I just, I think I'm going to, I just use my needle nose before. Maybe I'll put it down here on the desk so I don't stab my hand, huh? I put the tips of my needle nose pliers on that. And, um, oh yeah, I remember now. If you, if you push this up, there's a little spring in there like, and... There's got a little bit of give, so if you push up from the bottom, it raises this bushing up, and it seemed like the without the pressure down on that ring, it came off easier, it seemed like. There we go. So I'll show you how that looks. Little edges at the tips there. Looks like a round horseshoe or something. It's not very thick, but these little clips are strong. I don't know what kind of steel they use for that. There's a little piece that came out of the inside while I was forcing it. I'll show you where that goes. That goes inside here. So, with that, um, with that piece off, that uh, retaining ring you can just push on that bushing and push it right through the plastic housing and you can pull out the bushing and the stop motion mechanism all in one here okay now what's inside here remember like the the washers the clutch washer or stop motion washer that was inside other hand wheels uh, that I've done you know behind the knob Right, you put the hand wheel on, you put the little washer in a certain way, and then you twist the chrome knob on. This is kind of like that. Uh, it's got all these little cutouts for this mechanism to lock into. Uh, see on this side, it's it's got like a little arm that sticks down, and when you when it's in there. Put it back in there for a second, and when you when you push to uh, stop the motion going to the needle bar and stuff, it rocks up and it lifts that arm out of whatever notch it's in, so that the hand wheel can spin from the motor belt, but it doesn't turn anything else. And then when you want the motion to go back to the machine besides the hand wheel. You, when you rock that lever back over, you got to move it a little and it will eventually lock into one of those notches. And now when the hand wheel turns, it's going to turn this motion mechanism, which is screwed to the bushing, which is screwed to the arm, and that's going to turn it. So that's all this mechanism does, really, from what I've seen. All these... Uh, parts and everything it's just that when you push on to release the motion 
it rocks that arm up out of a notch. When you're finished and you push it back down, it finds the nearest notch as you start turning and it locks back together. And uh, pull that back out here for a moment. And I, I don't know what, what this is called. It looks kind of like a lock washer, I guess I would say. It's got three connections here and they just look like uh, rivets. And honestly, they kind of feel like plastic. I don't know if they are. I don't want to punch them out or pull them out. They, they might be, well, they might be metal. But I figure good enough alone, I can clean this all up with my crud cutter and the normal way I clean stuff, you know. So I don't see any reason to take this out. This guy now has a, an actuating spring in here that looks like a big fat W. Let's see if I can get a... Can you see that silver spring kind of up and then back down? And the end goes through this rocking plate. And the other end of that spring goes into this bracket that um, is held to the bushing with a hinge pin. So if you needed to or wanted to, like me, just how does this thing work, you know, uh, we can take off one of these E-clips. This uh, hinge pin is just a pin in there with grooves on the ends and these little E-clips, they're called, so slide on to lock it in place. And if we take out either one, then we can slide the hinge pin out, separate these two pieces, and you could remove the spring or replace it if it was broken, you know, something like that. Some space between the little center part that sticks in, there's two little spaces. If you have like your tension screwdriver, you can put in one of those spaces and twist it and it'll pull the E-clip off. The thing with E-clips and C-clips and circlips and stuff is they're called O-clips. Like when you finally get it off and it goes flying, you, you go, oh! And I'm sure they're called worse than O-clips, right? Let's see if I can... I, get this uh, snap ring plier. I don't think it's made for Eclipse. I think they make a special little wrench or plier to to take these off. I got it off once using my uh, tension screwdriver. Well, I couldn't even find my little tension, aluminum tension screwdriver. Must be rolling around on the floor, but I grab my Swiss Army knife with the little can opener and I'll see if I can't get that pointy tip. This might actually work better than the and get it in one of those little holes, give it a twist, and see now it's starting to come off. And I can just kind of keep keep uh prying here I think. Whoop, there it went. And it and oh it went flying, didn't it? <laughs> so I'll have to find that. Now with that E clip off one end I can just push get this wrist thing out of here. I can push on this hinge pin. See how that pin just goes through there and it I can just push, push on one end of that, come up here where the other E-clip is on, and just pull it right through. That's how those two pieces are held together. That, and then here's that little actuating spring I was talking about. So if you take pictures of this as you go, I hold it like this, Kind of looks like a fat M or something. But it goes in a little hole here. And a little hole on this little piece. 
uh, when it's put back together. So just let me show you some of these parts here. I'm going to take that out. I'll leave it in for now. It'll probably fall out. But I can take this bracket off of the... Whoop, there it fell out. I can take this bracket off of the bushing now. And you can see you can see what that bushing looks like. You see this is where that 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 big um, retaining ring that I first took off. You can see the groove that that goes in. And you see that the holes on this end are both even. And that is to put that um, hinge pin is what goes through there. And at the other end, one hole is big and the other hole is smaller and threaded. And that is where's my that is where the mounting screw goes into. Right? So big end so it goes the screw goes through there and into the arm the horizontal arm matches up with the big hole and then it's threaded into the little hole on the other end this is the end with threads and the little hole on the other end of the arm the other side of the arm the matching little hole here is threaded so it threads it threads into the bushing like so and and gets down in there uh, you know all the way flush okay so that's the pieces and let me show you when I said that that little arm comes down this is the part that that locks in to I guess what we call that lock washer so it snaps down in like that and fits right in one of those slots and then when you rock that panel up and it lifts up out of the slot the hand wheel can turn with the belt without turning the mechanism and the bushing and the arm so that's it in my little uh, <laughs> e-clip that went flying well it was a bad idea to have a bat black e-clip on a black worktop. Hmm? Look, I found the little rascal. So if you happen to drop one of these uh, and you have a sliding door anywhere nearby, be sure you look in the floor track for it. <laughs> That's where I found this one. Alright, so uh, let's put this um, Back to, let's put this back together now and we're going to start with this uh, bushing and the, the put up the piece with the two equal size holes that take the hinge pin okay so we want to slide this bracket up in there right and there's a couple tricky parts here so when you're fumbling around, I, I don't want you uh, yelling like my little brother. Andy made me do it, Mom! <laughs> this is one of the tricky parts. This little actuating spring that connects the two pieces that seems to want to fall out. And this spring is the other piece that kind of wants to roam around and fall out during the installation but you put it with the, the flat side down the little curled up edge facing up and it goes on this side by the locking foot there's a little bump right there that it sits on and it goes around the bushing and it definitely wants to slip all over the place when you're trying to put it together
Then on this little arm that sticks out, there's a hole for the spring. And the spring goes in like this. See how, see how everything wants to turn around and slip and fall apart. Now you can be doing this on your table or workbench so it will be more stable for you. And I may end up doing that. So there's the spring in one side. Now the trick is that this the top part, the rocker, also has a little arm with a little nub and a little hole in it that the other part of the spring goes through. And if you manage to get that spring in there, it's going to fold up over the other part like this. And while you're doing that, that's when this spring wants to fall out of everything. And this spring wants to twist and turn. So when I talk with a couple guys, uh, the way they approach it is they put this part on and put the hinge pin in and then they force the spring in and I tried that and it you know it seemed like it would be easier but I had a heck of a time and believe it or not uh, for me this way was a little bit easier <laughs> so let's see if I can get the spring in that other hole there here and get a look at it more. I'm not sure this was the best design but since I'm not a sewing machine design engineer I'll have to assume that this was the best that they could do here. Hmm. And what's frustrating is, you know, I'll get it in here and then when I'm trying to fold it over, it'll pop out. So I've got, I've managed to get it in there. I'm kind of pushing it spring down with my finger while I try and fold this over and get it up on top. And believe me, that spring is trying to fly out right now. Whew. Okay, so the spring is still in there. I'll show it to you in a minute. But the idea now is to line up the hole in the rocker bracket and the, line up the hole in the lock foot bracket, get this pin started through those two, and then turn the bracket or the bushing to line up the holes in it with the pin and eventually get the pin all the way through one two three four five six holes and don't let the springs fall out <laughs> so let's see if I can get this first first one kinda lined up here uh, see, like I said, you could rest this sitting on the on your bench or table. See, I had a way before. I think, yeah, if, I found that if I tilted the bracket like this towards that actuating spring end, that it lined up the hole better than if the bracket was flat. Hey. Okay, I got it for, through the first two holes. Now that little copper looking spring has shifted a little bit. So I want to move it back into place right in there. And now looking inside. I want to rotate this bushing to try and line up the hole in it with the pin. Okay. 
Let me show you that actuating spring. That's how it looks over here. You know, like a big W. And it's still it's still in place for me. Let's see if I can get through the other hole in the bushing. You think it'd be easy, but you still gotta kind of wiggle these parts around a little bit. Come on, you. There. Now I'm, now I'm approaching the two holes on this end, where the two brackets. And again, if you, if you kind of lean the top towards the actuating spring side away from the, the uh, lock foot, it seems to line those holes up a little bit better. I'm going to keep pushing and twisting that, that um, hinge pin in. There. Phew. Boy, I'm glad that's done. Okay, now this little copper spring has twisted a little bit again. I've been trying to figure out the exact purpose of that spring because it keeps wanting to twist on me and I'm wondering there. I got it pulled straight again. That seems to go underneath the hinge pin. And I think part of it is that when the when it is depressed uh, to to put down the lock foot in there that that spring keeps tension on it to keep it there so it doesn't just fall back I think that's what that kind of horseshoe looking forked spring is all right anyway we got the hinge a hinge pin in and we never took off that other e-clip right so now we've got to get the e-clip back on here so this assembly does not fall apart and again there's probably a little plier or something that's made to do this I'm gonna put it on with the opening this way and try and push it on there as far as I can just with my thumb which isn't real far because <laughs> they, they clip on very very tightly mm -hmm. a little spring clip pliers didn't want to help me much with this Let's see if I can get up here can you see how I've got that e-clip on there now and I'm going to try and put my plier on the hinge pin and the e-clip and gently see if I can push it on there and get it started going on or just push it on all the way. That went easier than the last time I did it. Whew, okay. Looks pretty good. Now, we've got to get it all back assembled in here, right? And this is the end with the two different size holes that are going to take the mounting screw and it just slides right right through the opening and you push it all the way in there okay and then we want to put this I think they I think Singer called it the retaining ring and I do know that the little slot the, that's cut around the bushing doesn't really show up above the plastic until you 
until you kind of squeeze the or push push this up in here. Maybe you can hear that. When you when you push it up, then you can see the the groove kind of that's cut in there for this retaining ring to go on. And this one I could kind of get started with my thumb on there. And then I'm going to take my plier, one, one side in there, in the bushing, and the tip of my plier like on the ring and try and pop it on there. Ooh, it almost is all the way. So I'll just do that again just a little bit. There. And you want to be sure that that ring is on all the way so this doesn't work loose. Now it's in a uh, locked position. So as the belt would turn the hand wheel, this mechanism is locked in that lock washer and it's going to be screwed right here to the hand wheel so it's going to make everything on the machine work. Then let me test the throw out of the stop motion which is going to lift that lock foot up out of the lock washer and now the hand wheel can turn without the bushing or the mechanism turning and that's that's the stop motion so then you can wind your bobbin and we put it back down we go into lock motion then at this point I guess is when you would snap your cover plate back on I think I discussed that before there's a little nub in the plastic and there's a little hole up there so you would want to try and line that little hole up and then snap that ring on all right let me get the machine over here all right and then turn turn our arm wheel so the larger hole for the screw is facing up we'll turn the arm then I'll turn the hand wheel so the larger screw opening is up and we slide it on like so and come up a little bit here then all that remains here for the mounting is to get that screw back in there and tighten it up I just put it on my magnet and get it in the holes there we go then our straight screwdriver to go in there and tighten it up and be sure you be sure you get it tightened in there uh, sometimes it wants to hesitate when it starts to go through the the two smaller holes so just take your time and if it feels like it's binding then you know back it up like a half turn and and try again but it'll eventually go make sure it's going in even there we go and then we can um, reinstall the hand belt I mean the hand belt the motor belt around the hand wheel and the motor pulley as I show in the uh, motor belt video and then you would uh, adjust it for three quarter inch or five millimeter deflection to get to get the right tension on the belt so again at the end of this video I'll put a link on cover removal and the motor belt uh, 
video and I'll put those in the description below uh, below but that is the unique um, rocking stop motion release and lock mechanism on the Singer model 353 354 genie and starlet sewing machines a little more complicated than the older ones that just had the hand wheel a washer and, and a big chrome screw <laughs> thanks for tuning in I hope you found that interesting and if you have a problem with a genie hand wheel or stop motion that may help explain it you might have a missing screw broken screw or something like that Hope you can come back and see me in the future. Take care.